Welcome back to another Android TV box review. I have the TX2 in for testing. This is quite a popular Android box for a couple of reasons. The specs are actually quite good for the price. So this was sent in via GearBest and I will go through everything that's included. We'll run some tests and come to a conclusion at the end. The remote control is a very standard one. It's been around for a while. It's okay, it does the job. It takes two times AAA batteries. Also get a HDMI cable, length of that is around about a meter. And there is the power adapter. I have the UK version, that is a five volts. Onto the user manual, quite a generic manual, but it does give you some basic information on setting up the box. Looking at the fit and finish, uh, pretty good. It's um, a matte effect on the casing. It feels okay though to the touch. And on the back we have the AV out, the SPDIF port, that's an optical one, the LAN, HDMI and power. And on the side we have the micro SD slot and two USB ports. On the underside there is a reset button on the left side and the ring around the middle, that's actually plastic, it's not rubber on this one. Fortunately the LED is quite dim, it's not a bright one, it's quite well diffused. We boot up the box. And then we get into a slightly different menu screen on this particular Android box. They've gone for a sort of more pastel colours. It's more uh, pleasing to the eye, less of an eyesore than some of the other ones. And we run through the apps. You get a fair few apps included in this. You probably won't use all of them. But they have put ones like Mobdro, Film On, Netflix, etc. included. You can see all the apps that are here. This is rooted as well. You'll see the super user icon there. Now into the settings menu, they've got their own custom uh, menu display for this. This basically gives you the same options as you would get in the normal settings. What they've done is they've just used their own uh, particular design. It just makes it a bit easier to get to some of the settings easier than um, the standard sort of Android look. Don't know why it has Dolby in there. It's probably a generic one that doesn't have Dolby decoding into the date and time settings. Most of the settings you'd expect are fairly easy to access via this menu. Quick check on the storage. So we've got a total space of 12.41 gigabytes out of the 16 on the NAND flash. You can of course expand that with a pen drive or with a micro SD. You do have screen casting as well via DLNA. And this just gives you some information. It's running Android 6.01. So fairly up to date, not the latest version, but uh, more newer than some of the boxes. I did check the system update, but there wasn't any available at the time of the review. Sometimes they release them, other times they don't, but um, it does seem to be working. And if you go into the app manage section, it lets you um, easily uninstall or um, check what's on the card and what apps are running. It's quite a decent little menu system. I quite like it myself, particularly if you've not used um, many Android devices before. It makes it quite easy to go through the apps and check what you want. And you'll probably uninstall a few of them. And the advanced settings takes you onto the main uh, settings for the Android. It'd be very familiar to anyone that's used an Android device. You have Bluetooth on this. It's not the latest version, but it is included. All of the settings that you can get into the main um, settings menu are here. And you can see here we have a total memory of two gigabytes. That's one of the attractions with this box. You get increased storage and you get increased RAM over some of the budget boxes just for a slight extra price increase over the super budget ones. So they're really going for someone that wants a little bit more spec but um, without paying too much more extra. There was a screenshot setting that I found, but you don't have a navigation bar at the bottom, so that's not really going to be of much use. I think it's a generic sort of uh, settings that are included. Some of these settings would be for a tablet, but uh, it doesn't really matter particularly. You can always install your own launcher if you want. Now, if you want to customize the look at the bottom with the shortcuts to the apps, you can just add that, go through the list, and tick the ones that you want. Personally, I just put the very commonly used apps that I would use on that um, section at the bottom. You can also remove the ones that you don't want. It just makes it a bit easier to get to the apps that you use most frequently. 
you see here that it says it dock supports no more than eight apps. So you have a maximum limit of eight, which is probably enough. There's a memory recycle button as well, although it's probably going to be less used with the two gig RAM. I did find that the RKMC um, was a bit flaky. Sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. So I did a factory reset. It may have just been my box, my particular installation, but for the sake of clarity, I'll just show you I've done a reset. The RKMC is basically a reskinned version of Kodi. It's the latest version, but it performs exactly the same. It's just a front end that they've put on it. You do get quite a lot of streams included with this, particularly in the music and video section. You'll see it populating now. When you first launch this, you'll see that some of them will update, and some of these add-ons are not actually live. That's just one of the things that you get with the boxes. They put a whole bunch on there. And most of them work, but not all of them. Some of them have ceased to work. You can always go through and adjust the ones that you want. So if you want a box that has a fairly loaded section in Kodi, this would be quite a good little choice for you. But there are plenty of guides out there to help you if you want to customize that. If you long press the power button, you get a choice of rebooting or powering off. You can see there it came up with a tablet. It doesn't really make any difference. It's just a generic ROM that they've used. Now I sometimes use Aptoid if you don't want to register for the Play Store. And that also lets you update the software that you have as well. It's very similar to the Play Store except minus the registration. I just find it quite easy to use. Make sure you use the apps that are verified though just to be on the safe side. Quick benchmark test with Geekbench 4. And this came in at around 826 for the multi-core, not quite as fast as some of the other boxes that I've used um, with the same chip, but that's possibly down to other things like the RAM speed, the internal components might vary slightly, but it's still okay for a basic streaming box. We got a score of 14.6 on the Bonsai benchmark, so this is okay for light to moderate gaming. If you want heavier gaming, you really want to look at a more expensive box, and the Wi-Fi speed is also pretty good. I've got over 30 megabits a second. As far as the performance goes, it's not going to break any records. This is super budget. It's the entry-level rock chip, and it's very much designed to be affordable. But as far as the streaming goes, it's actually pretty good. It didn't have any problems. You've got 4K support as well with this box. It works well enough for basic streaming. A couple of thoughts overall with the TX2. I quite like this box, it's just a few minor points. The navigation bar that's lacking, the remote isn't the newer programmable, and the RKMC was a little bit buggy, so I reinstalled that. On the other side, you do get a good spec for the price, and Bluetooth included. Don't normally get that on most boxes at this price point, and it actually ran pretty well. The price point for this box is very attractive, and it's certainly a decent upgrade over the super budget entry level ones.